Hey everyone, welcome back to Gannett Reviews, where today we're checking out a 1985 Marine Trader LaBelle 40. This is a new listing for yacht brokers of Daytona, and at the time of filming this, she was up for sale for 84900 and she was lying in Daytona Beach, Florida. I don't want to use the phrase she's pushing 40 years old, because she's only a year younger than me, but with the amount of time, money and effort that's been invested in this one, it's hard to see any signs of that. Just a few examples over the past six years, she's had a new Bimini canopy, she's got snap-on windshield covers, new water heater, new VHF, new GPS, radar, fresh water pump, it's got new fuel lines, both the port and starboard turbos have been rebuilt, as have the heat exchangers, and the galley was updated as well. This one also boasts two 16,000 BTU air conditioning units, making this a very comfortable long-term liveaboard and perfect for doing the great loop. As we step inside, I love the headroom that was in this one. I'm six foot two and didn't have any issues. There's plenty of natural light coming in through all the windows and the hatch leading out to the aft deck. I like the use of the handholds down the ceiling should you ever need it in rough weather. You get a very comfortable sofa built into the saloon. This has got storage underneath, but it would also make a great watch berth. And as I pan round, you'll see here we've got the flat screen TV. We also have a number of light fixtures and then on the port hand side between the two seats that table actually moves out and expands so that can be used as a full table in the saloon but I like the fact that you can also put it to the side whenever space is an issue and if you wanted to it could be easily used for housing that TV and on the starboard side is where you'll find a lower helm position I like that it's not only right next to the door but it's right next to the, the gate section and the guardrails so this would be perfect for either single-handed operation or if you've got limited crew on board. So to start with we've got the clock and the barometer as well as a weather radio and then up overhead we've got the West Marine VHF and then we've got a standard horizon loud halo and there's great visibility from this helm position. Although this one does boast a flybridge you wouldn't necessarily need to use it for close quarter manoeuvring the way you do with some other trawlers. And then we've got the Davis Vantage weather instrumentation. You get the Garmin GPS chart plotter. And then we've got the Simrad NSS12. This is a multifunction display. And it can be set up for chart plotter, radar. It's even got the sounder, forward looking sonar. You can do all sorts with this one. And then just tucked away underneath this curtain, you've also got a handheld VHF radio. So there's plenty of navigation and electronic equipment. Whether well, you want to use this as a weekend cruiser or looking at more of a long distance explorer. You've then got the engine instrumentation. This one's powered by twin Volvo or TAMD 40B diesel engines, approximately 165 horse each. And give or take, we're looking at around 2100 hours. And then we've also got the Wagner Autopilot. I like the use of the traditional ship's wheel. And then I also like that the step leading in and out of the cabin there's actually storage in there and that's perfect for keeping something you want to have close by the helm such as a foghorn. And then as we pan round over on the port hand side this is where you'll find a great navigation station. There's plenty of room up top for your charts and it does have a sliding drawer here so there's plenty of space for your navigation tools and stationery etc. And then underneath this drawer this is where you'll find a little drinks cabinet and this is accessible both from the saloon and also from the galley down below. I liked how secure these doors were. I don't see this one popping open anytime while we're underway. Moving forward, just a few short steps down into the galley. I like how there's a handhold on either side. I liked how much room there was in this galley. If you were using this as an extended cruiser or a liveaboard or whatever, you want something you can be able to prepare your favourite meals. This one's got a good amount of counter space. And then we've also got a Hamilton Beach Microwave. You get a built-in spice rack. It's got a printer's three burner stovetop cooker, and it's also got an oven as well. You get a ton of storage cabinets and lockers. I like the fact you got opening hatches here. It's additional ventilation, especially while you're cooking. What really impressed me is you've got the refrigerator and freezer combo. This is perfect for extended cruising or when you want to spend a weekend just to anchor when normally supplies are limited. And then as we pan round 
will then take you into the forward stateroom. This would be an ideal guest cabin. And to begin with, uh, on the starboard side, you'll find that this has got a vanity station with mirror lighting and storage. And this is a queen size berth. And I like that it feels more like a proper bed rather than the traditional V berth you normally have in trawlers. And I like how many storage cabinets, lockers, and drawers within this stateroom. It allows for your family or your friends to stay on board for extended periods of time. You get a good mixture of both natural and artificial light in this cabin. There is an overhead hatch, and the reason it's a little dark is there's a canopy cover over the top of that hatch on the outside. And as well as the obvious storage that you can see from here, there's also additional storage underneath the bed itself, as well as a built-in step to get up onto the bed. And as an example, I like the fact that the lockers have got the ventilated louver effect. It saves things going damp and mouldy. like the wood lining that's inside here, and it's deep enough to have plenty of hanging locker space to keep a number of outfits in. And as we head back out, opposite the galley, just underneath the helm, that's where you're going to find the main head compartment for the boat. And this one's got the toilet, the sink and the shower. It's also got space for all your toiletries and personal belongings. I like the brass fittings and fixtures that was in here, just gave it a nice quality touch. And I should point out that this one carries 300 gallons of fresh water, as well as 300 gallons of diesel on board. There's plenty of water on board, you don't have to worry about somebody stealing it all when they take a shower. And then as we start to make our way head and aft, next up is the control panel and breaker panel. And I liked how this was in a central location. It's also clearly labelled, so it's easy to work out what to switch on and off. And then as we head aft, I'll take you into the owner's stateroom. And this yacht's got a beam of 13.4 feet. And if you notice, it's pretty much a full width aft stateroom. It's one of the biggest cabins I've been in for a boat that was only 40 foot in length. I liked the amount of both natural and artificial lights that was in this cabin. And most of the hatches you see, they're actually opening hatches so you got additional ventilation if required. And this is a queen size island berth. And again, you'll find a ton of storage lockers, drawers and cabinets throughout the stateroom. You got controls for the air conditioning unit and there's plenty of air conditioning vents in here. And then this stateroom is en suite. And if we make our way through, this one's got the toilet and then it's got the shower compartment, which is basically behind this mirror. And then there's also plenty of storage space here for your toiletries and personal belongings. And as with the other head compartment, I liked all the brass fittings and fixtures that was in here. Just helps give that quality feel. And something about it makes it feel more nautical as well. They add to a bit of that classic character for a trawler yacht. And then as we make our way around the stateroom, Again, I like the fact that as many of these storage lockers, they've always got some sort of open air ventilation. That way nothing's going to get that damp, musky smell to it. And as with the guest cabin forward, this one's got plenty of locker space. It's deep enough to store enough clothes for extended periods of time. And then if we pop back up into the main saloon, we can then head out aft to the aft deck. And it's just a few short steps up and it leads out through a double door. It takes you to an excellent area for relaxing with family and friends on board. You'll notice all the woodwork's covered up to protect it from the Florida sun when the boat's not in use. It does have overhead lighting so you can use this any time of day or at night. And notice on the aft deck at the transom we've got the cockpit table that can be moved out and expanded out for having snacks and meals. And we've also got a barbecue mounted on the port quarter as well. And it's from this aft deck where you can also climb down. This one does come with a bathing platform. And as well as having a bathing platform, it's also got a boarding ladder as well. So if you are in swimming or anything like that, it's easy to get back on board. And as we pan round in the aft cockpit, you'll also find a large cooler. Keep all those refreshments and beverages close at hand. I like the way the boat hook's mounted above the doors, that way everybody knows where it is, but it's also out of the way so it's not getting an empty road. And behind this door that we just came through, there's a locker space here, and I was impressed with how deep the locker is. 
you keep different tools in here as well as canopy covers, things like that. So you even got two electrical outlets in here, should you need it for any power tools. And then from the aft deck, it's just a couple of short steps, and that takes us up into the flybridge. And I like the fact there's a solid handhold leading you up into there. And then notice all the storage lockers throughout the entire flybridge area. This one's designed and built for extended cruising, where storage is always a main concern. And up here you see we've got a single helm seat. You get that new Bimini canopy over the top. And then as I pan the camera around, you'll see we've got a large L-shaped seating area. And you can also have soft cushions for up here, so that your family and friends can cruise up the flybridge with you. And for those considering the Great Loop, this radar arch is on hinges, so if height restrictions do become an issue, this can quickly drop down for you. And what you might not be expecting is this has got two 50-inch solar panels, and that way you can provide plenty of power on board, and also keep those batteries topped up while you're at anchor. And then you can see up close those hinges for dropping the radar arch. This can also make it easier storing the boat anywhere that's got overhead cover. And as to the helm position, you get your full engine instrumentation, as well as having your depth gauge. But this one's definitely been equipped for cruising more from the lower helm than from the flybridge. And then one extra feature of the flybridge light is on the starboard side. You'll find you've got a built-in cooler, again for keeping those fresh and close by. And then if we head back round to the aft deck, I'll take you around the side and up to the bow. And as you make your way around at the side, I like the fact that you've got solid handhold everywhere you go. Obviously it's not that big of an issue in a marina like this, but if you're underway, especially in heavy seas, always gives you that extra comfort and confidence. And then when we do make our way up to the bow, you can see that there's plenty of room in the coach roof that you could sit out or lay out if you wanted to. This could also be a good spot to do a little bit of fishing if you wanted. And then on the bow you'll see that we've got multiple fender baskets, so that when you are underway you can put all the fenders here and keep them out the road. You've got a spare anchor as well as having the main anchor. You've got an electric windlass but this also has a winch drum to it which will come in handy if you're going through lock gates. And then it's got these bags in place to keep all your ropes and lines safe and secure. And then finally I'll take you back inside and show you the engine compartment. And for this one the engines are located underneath the main saloon. As I mentioned earlier these are twin Volvo TAMD 40B diesel engines. They're approximately 165 horse each with just over 2100 hours on the clock. I love how accessible everything is for doing your day to day maintenance from checking the oil, the header tank, filters, things like that. It's also easy to get to the battery banks. You can see the batteries look like they've been replaced recently too. You've got your water separators. And I also like the amount of light that was down in here, both natural and artificial. It makes it far easier for carrying out any tasks and activities down here. And I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments down below. If you haven't done so already, please hit that like and subscribe button. It really does make a difference. And I appreciate Yup Brokers of Daytona allow me on board, take a look and share this video with you and as always I look forward to catching you on the next one. Thanks everyone.